Go, oh God, look, I'm doing a new thing. It's now it sprouts up. Don't you recognize it? I'm making a way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. It is a, you know, I know some people disagree with me, but I was happy to have a little bit of cool weather this morning. I, I, my wife is like, I'm tired of the cold. And I'm like, I'm okay with having a little bit more cool. We don't need to go into short sleeps quite yet, but it is a good morning to come together to worship, to give thanks, to celebrate, to be the body of Christ together. Announcements this morning, weekly activities, um, chair aerobics, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. Wednesday night program at 5.30 p.m. And this is the week we're rehearsing for Palm Sunday. Um, and then men's group, Saturdays at 7.30 a.m. I know that they do Bible study and they do, they have coffee and they eat donuts and they would love to have other men join them for men's group. Uh, further announcements, March 21st, this Saturday, is the session meeting, not this Saturday, this Thursday is the session meeting at 1.30 p.m. Uh, please try to have, if you haven't got, if you are a session member and need to get me something, please get it to the office by Tuesday morning, because Tuesday is when we're putting the session packets together. Um, also, Chris Ward will be joining us for my final meeting, so please, if you if you are able, please plan to attend. Uh, March 24th, Palm Sunday with Wednesday night program. Uh, please, it'll be a wonderful service. And then after, when, after worship on Palm Sunday, we will be having a farewell to me. Um, it just doesn't work on Easter to have the farewell. So the farewell fellowship to me will be after worship on Palm Sunday. Um, March, uh, Monday, Thursday, March 28th, soup supper is at 5.30, and then communion worship service will be at 6.15-ish. Please sign up for uh, Monday, Thursday. Um, can we go back to my slide? Could you please? Thank you. Um, please sign up for the soup supper. Uh, I know that we don't have many sign-ups, and it works a lot better if more people bring soup, so if you are going to be here, please consider bringing something to share with us to eat. And then Easter Sunday, uh, breakfast at 9 a.m. There is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. Please sign up. If you're gonna bring something specific to plan up for that thing, if you just want to bring something novelist, sign up at the bottom so we know what you're bringing. Um, all that is there and ready for you to sign up. And then you should obviously you should worship at 10 a.m. on Easter. Uh, April 11th, Thursday Women at Los Amigos in Leclerc. Uh, and then Thursday Women, March 9th, is at Mission Barbecue in Davenport. See the times there. Uh, April 13th, uh, friends will be in the Fellowship Hall and also May 11th. Both of those times are at 6.30 p.m. And then, what else we got? Uh, May 12th, uh, friend, uh, there will be a women's mini retreat. Uh, there's a small $5 donation to cover what? 24th. What did I say? Uh, 24th. Thank you. May 24th, um, which is a Friday at 6 p.m., they will be in the Women's Mini Retreat. There's a small $5 donation to cover the crop, supplies and the craft, and we will be serving, they will be serving homemade pie, which sounds delicious. And then lastly, this morning, please come join us in the Fellowship Hall for coffee, snacks, and conversation. Are there any announcements that I missed? Sally? Okay, I have a few, and I'm going to talk in the Sunday School, so probably just run over this later. Um, gift cards for Easter baskets, we are sending those out this week, and if you would like to donate to help you yes. the cost of the Easter cards, um, we have eight families that we're helping out with Easter this year, so if you'd like to make a donation, it would be great to send them out this week. Um, and then remember that the lily 
start doing today because I have to order them tomorrow. So I'll make sure that if you are a few times a week, make sure you put it in the night today because I'm going to get you for 12 hours. And thirdly, um, I called Debbie and she got the care chain going. Uh, Marilee's daughter, Carrie, um, Marilee is very significant other. Um, she had a blood sugar count of 484 the other day, and we had to do surgery. She had a lot of infection in her leg. Right now, it's a very positive. We think that she's going to be able to save her leg, but we're not sure yet. Um, but it looks like the antibiotics are doing a little bit. So please continue to pray for her, and hopefully we can save that leg. Sally, what is her name so I can get that written down? Her name is Carrie. Carrie. Her daughter, Carrie. And I don't know her last name. Uh, but Carrie just texted me and said, please thank the prayer chain for prayers because prayer she needs help. One more. <laughs> for Kathy, not paid it for Kathy yet, $42.17. So please, if you put that in, I would appreciate that. Okay, I'll read that one. Okay. I forgot to put the pen cap out of my mouth. Um, per capita, forty-two seventeen. Uh, if you have not paid your per capita for 2024, and that is for people who are an actual member of the congregation, if you have not signed on the dotted line, we don't pay per capita on you. But if you have set paid on the dotted line, signed on the dotted line, and would like to help pay your per capita for this year, the amount is forty-two seventeen. Um, and Sally would appreciate. Are there any? Yes, any? Besides celebrating today because it's St. Patrick's Day, you can see a lot of green, it's also Kay's birthday. <laughs> so if you get a chance, wish her happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's special. Another trip for our son. Yes, Dan. Well, I was going to announce that today is Paul and my 57th anniversary. Oh, uh, but we're going to let Kate. No. <laughs> That's wow, fine. 57. That's, That's impressive. That's yeah. impressive, yes. So, wish Diane happy anniversary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, a lot of old colors and very cool cakes. <laughs> All right, since everyone is saying their prayer request this morning, then at the beginning, I'm putting them down. Okay, any other announcements? We will have time to share prayer requests at that time, but any other announcements that need to be shared? Seeing none, let us take a moment of silence for prayer hearts and our minds for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Ecclesiastes 1 through 8. This will be responsive. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embrace. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear. Tear, tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. 
Please join me in singing. Please rise and join me in singing. My hope is built on nothing less than victory. mistakes we make and about how well or poorly we care for others. In this spirit, let us offer our prayers to God. Please join me in prayer. Merciful God, you made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you, but our known, but our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconsistent our obedience incomplete. Day by day, we fail to grow into your likeness. In your tender love, forgive us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and make us to live a life that more reflects his love and sacrifice. We lift our confession and prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior and guide. Amen. In life, and in, de in life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we are assured that there is no sin so terrible that God cannot forgive, no hurt so terrible that God cannot heal. God accepts, God forgives, and God sets free. Receive the forgiving love of God and hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. of the peace. Let us boldly come to worship, knowing the love and compassion of Jesus. Let us boldly live into our relationships, knowing reconciliation and peace. Let us boldly go into the world, sharing the love, peace, compassion, and reconciliation we have here in this space. 
We all of God are God's creation. The peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other in Christian love and fellowship. <laughs> Patron saint of cats. What? Yeah, straight up. Saint Gertrude's like. I it was going around Facebook with all my pastor friends. Like, let's not forget Saint Gertrude. Anyway, do you guys ever have to say goodbye to somebody? Yes. Yeah, you are. It's it's kind of not fun, right? Sometimes it's kind of hard, right? Well, in a couple weeks, I am going to say goodbye to all of you. No! (laughs) 
Yeah. In a couple weeks, I am going on Easter Sunday. I'm going to preach, and then that's the last time I'm going to be your pastor. No. Yeah, I know it's scary. It's it's not fun, but it's time for a new thing for you guys. And so I want you guys to remember as we say goodbye. Just because people say goodbye to you doesn't mean they stop loving you. Because I'm not going to stop loving you. Just because people, just because people say, <laughs> uh, just because people say goodbye doesn't mean they stop thinking about you. Because I will think about you often and pray for you. But it is time for me to go on to the next thing. And so I just want to say that I have really enjoyed being with all of you over the past couple of years, and you have been lovely. Yes, Willow. Yep. You guys had Pastor Melody leave, and that was really hard, too. So I'm just going to say that I love you all, and God still loves you, and I will think about you often. All right, let's pray. Okay. Come time. Come time. Come time. Come time. All right. Come time. Dear Jesus, be with us always. Help us to... Go through the bad times. Be with us in the good times. Help us go through goodbyes. And make this a good experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you guys can go to Sunday school. Please join me in the scripture reading from Revelation 21, 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made eat ready as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, All is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will freely give water from the life-giving spring. Those who emerge victorious will inherit these things. I will be their God, and they will be my sons and daughters. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16. 21. The Lord says, Who makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters? Who brings out chariot and horse, army and battalion? They will lie down together and will not rise. They will be extinguished like a wick. Don't remember the prior things, don't ponder on ancient history. Look, I'm doing a new thing. Now it sprouts up. Don't you recognize it? I'm making a way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. The beasts of the field, the jackals, ostriches will honor me because I have put water in the desert and streams in the wilderness to give water to my people, my chosen ones. This people whom I formed for myself will recount my praise. A new thing is happening.
My first sermon to you two years ago was on the same passage. A new thing is happening. Something new is happening. And it's true again today. Not exactly today, it's going to be a couple weeks, but this isn't an appropriate Easter sermon. So, today is the day. A new thing is happening. I am going on to a new place for new challenges. I'm going on to a new place with different situation, different things, different challenges, a different goal. A new thing is happening there. And a new thing is happening here. You are entering a new chapter. Uh, part of that chapter will be admitting yourselves. Part of that chapter will be seeking your next pastor. A new thing is happening here, too. It isn't just a new thing that I'm leaving. It is a new thing that is happening here. It's not just the goodbye. It is the next chapter. A new thing is happening. God is constantly doing new and different things. God is constantly calling us in new and different directions. God is constantly presenting us with new challenges, new opportunities, new things to do. A new thing is happening, don't you see it? It springs forth. Here's the thing about that passage, and I think I understand it, but there's a little bit that I think maybe it glosses over, and it, because it's being artistic. But just because the new thing is happening doesn't mean that we don't take things with us. It doesn't mean that we don't leave things behind. We take, we take things with us. We don't leave this place and leave everything that we had behind. The Israelites, when they left exile, you know that they took with them the experiences that they had. So even as God was doing a new thing, the old thing was still there with them. A memory, a reminder. And so this morning, I'm going to do something it's going to make some of you very, 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 very happy because you don't have to look at it anymore. You have made me, you've made it very clear how much you hate looking at this thing over the last two years. It is time for me to repack my bag. And I will tell you, last night I was like, oh no, what did I pull out of it the first time that I can remember to put back into it? And you know, I don't remember everything, so some of it you're just going to have to remember what I did. But, I am taking with me some things that I brought with me. So, I know that I brought my Nerf guns. You know, I never actually shot these things while I was here. And I really, like, they are, they are, for how little are they are, powerful little Nerf guns. So they go back in my, my effect. What? <laughs> Told you, they, they go pretty good. I also take my coffee. Um, I have not out of this one as much. We'll get to that in a second. But I have drank a lot of coffee. Well, I have been. What else do I see that I brought with me? I brought the snow globe. That was supposed to be a reminder that things are going to get shook up. Um, and they weren't. Um, you can't take that. It's mine! <laughs> also, the trunk is broken, Martin. You don't want it. And I know there were some times that the shaking up was that, and sometimes it was just gentle, but things were shook up. Shaken up? I don't know. There's a word. What else did I bring with me? 
Um, I brought this with me. My my worship leading thing. I know this didn't come out of there, but this is something I brought with me. My way of leading special services. Um, communions and funerals, and also, I know I didn't pull this out of this bag because it doesn't actually fit in this bag. I know things make noise now. I brought my worship Bible that's going to go in there and then immediately come right back out because I'm going to need it. <laughs> it's the problem with doing this two weeks before. What else did I come with me? Um, I think that might be about it. Oh, I'm going to put a cable in there, reminder of all the times we all played guitar. I brought the guitars with me. I did buy one of them while I was here, but the cape was came with me. Yeah, that's kind of what I brought with me. And I brought some experience, I brought some knowledge. Um, I brought a desire to help you get to the next chapter. Um, maybe not have gotten where we hoped to go with what I brought with me. But I brought these things with me. But I didn't, I'm not just taking what I brought with me. There are, uh, there are things that I have acquired here that I'm also taking with me. I, I'm taking these little dudes with me. Um, they were from McDonald's. They had the adult Happy Meals, and I got two of the four. And I'm not taking, I mean, I think not putting them in there because I care about the things, but just as a reminder of how much McDonald's I've eaten since I started working out with Claire. <laughs> It was a lot. Um, only to be seconded by Quick Star went to Quick Star over there. What else? I bought a new coffee mug that is also going to go in and come immediately right back out. There's going to need that. I bought my comically large water bottle. Um, I bought this before all of the Stanley water bottles got fancy and expensive and everyone wanted them. I've had this water. It's going to take a drink. And then it's an illustration, it's not exact. Um, I brought, I have a stack here of. I don't know if this is all of it, but this is most of the artwork that the kids have made me over the last couple of years. This is everything that made it to my door. Um, that one's from Hawken, that one's from Matthew. Um, this one's almost got to be from Audrey because it says, Too Sassy Little Girl. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that one's from Hawken. I think this one's from Haley. That's from Briar from Wednesday Night Program. I don't know who all of these are from. Willow. This one have a name on it. Haley. I don't know about Haley. All kinds of artwork. Just memory, memories of the kids and the good times that we had. Experiencing the first time I have experienced true youth ministry since I graduated college. Um, I take with me, for anyone who was at Vacation Bible School, I don't remember if I got this last year or two years ago, but my bubble gun that the kids loved. Um, I don't think he's actually going to fit in here either. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm going to get in there. And, uh, and then a couple more things. I take my business cards with me. Um, I made more generic business cards because I knew that I was going to be going from place to place. So, and if you've never actually noticed my business cards out there, one, they're still out there if you want to grab them, but two, um, they say you are loved in the back. And the front has my name and my email address. Those things, and then my. I had one of these before, but I got one for the office and got an upgrade for it. My little coffee maker. Um. Yeah, that's kind of the, the objects. Probably my notebook too, but like that was never getting packed up. That just kind of goes with me. 
yeah, that's kind of what I bought. It's kind of the objects I required, and there's probably more. It's kind of the objects I've acquired since I've been here. And now they go with me too. I'm also going to take experiences and memories up here. Um, the experience of the Tuck Fest Parade. The experience of Vacation Bible School. Uh, the experience of Winston and Program. However you want to qualify that experience. The experience of getting to know you all. The experience of being in a hospice room and a hospital for the experience of working with the funeral home, of standing here, standing there, the experience of giving the word of God, sometimes well received, sometimes not. I take experiences, I take the learnings that I've made here, I take my missteps and mistakes and hopefully learn from those missteps and mistakes. I take a lot with me. And I leave things behind. Um, I intended to have my little, little fidget toy that has sat on the pulpit most of the time. It's not there. I don't know where it's at. It's in this church somewhere. Probably in my office, but if it's not, you're going to find it in a couple of months and be like, whose is this? I guess it goes in the youth stuff. Um, I'm going to leave things behind, because I always do. I am not that person that can keep track of everything. And forgetful, I, I leave things behind. But I also leave my work behind. I leave things that I have done behind. Um, I leave lessons that I have taught. Uh, be they big philosophical lessons or how do we do this thing on the computer lessons. I leave behind a set of bylaws that's not from 1986 um, and some corrections to those bylaws. Uh, I leave behind a manual of operations in theory. It approved in a couple of days. I leave behind some administrative work that needed to be done a long time ago. I leave behind a mission study that I helped you work through. Uh, a PDP, no, MDP, it's so dumb. Anyway, the thing that's in the system that's going to help you get a pastor, my hands and influence are on that. Not a lot, I was intentionally separated from it, but I leave my influence on this place behind. Even as the new thing is happening, and it is happening, um, it might not be exactly what we want, it might not come at the time we want. The new thing is happening. But just because that new thing is happening, it does not mean that the things that have happened before are suddenly gone. The memories do not leave. Because as I said, the people who would have been hearing this, they would have either had returned or been returning from exile. They still feel the effects of that ordeal. They still feel the effects of what had happened. And two, though, in their exile, they remembered that God loved them before. God loved them to lead them out of Egypt. God loved them to give them the promised land the first time. They remember the experience of the ordeal, but they also remember the good. This is the end of a 
this is a good lie. Um, this is a, this is my final sermon. Now, it's not technically my final sermon. Easter will be my final sermon, but that will be an Easter sermon I have preached. 11 of those, 12 of those. What year is it? 24. Yeah, this will be my 12th Easter sermon. Um, I've preached Easter sermons. They're all kind of the same. Anyone who says they've got a unique Easter sermon is lying to you. It's going to be an Easter sermon. I will try to do my best. I will try to make something unique, but it's an Easter sermon. There's only so much you can do there. The, the point is to remind you that God loves you and came back to save you. That's the point. This is my fine, This is my last sermon. As they used to, college professors used to call it your last lecture. This is my last sermon. This is an end, this is a goodbye. But that means this is the beginning of something new. Something new for me. Something new for you. Will that be a great thing or a painful thing? if it will be. I don't know for you if it will be. I made a decision and then immediately started questioning that decision. If anyone from Clinton is asking why I'm questioning that, if you happen to see this and asking why I'm questioning that decision, it's not the church that's making me question that decision. I chose to go with you. There are outside circumstances that made me question it. I, I am excited to start working with you if you happen to see this today. <laughs> um, the camera, the camera. <laughs> um, there are there are outside circumstances that made me wonder if that was the right decision, um, but it's not the church. And two, you will have to decide if the direction you're going continues to serve.
and blessing the children, healing the sick, and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Um, we have many in our midst to lift up in prayer this morning. Uh, those that were lifted earlier, Mary Lee's daughter Carrie, who is struggling with complications from diabetes, they are hopeful that the infection in her leg uh, will be taken care of by the antibiotics and she will be able to keep her leg while we continue to keep her in our prayers. We also celebrate Diane and Paul and their 57th wedding anniversary, which is just astounding. Like, I don't think you, I, maybe you do, because you've been married to him for 57 years. You understand what living with somebody for 57 years is. But I just, it's such an astounding, like, we're at gonna be 11 years in a couple weeks. And uh, that seems like a long time. 57 is a long time. So congratulations to you. Uh, it's also Kay's birthday, we're just going to walk right past that. The PNC, you're welcome. I, you're welcome. It's either that or we're going to sing happy birthday. No. Okay. <laughs> I need the door. <laughs> uh, we continue to pray with the PNC um, and the challenges that they are experiencing. Um, we pray with the family of Randy Bloomingdale, who passed away. Uh, continue to pray with Nicole McLaughlin, uh, Hazel and Don Smith, Betty and Henry, Daryl Lively, Laura Ernstner, Christian, McKnight Grebel, Mary Jo Studenberg, Marilyn Bailey, Donna Luckman, Laura Ewalt, Pat Winhausen, Janelle Ewalt, Dick Wells, Dina Risa Holloway, Heather Chapman, Cooper, Ken Larson, Diane and Paul Gillespie, Ronnie Dredge, Nora Brown's dad, Craig Will Hubbard. I know he's watching because he let me know he's watching every week. Um, and so he told me yesterday that I'm supposed to tell you that he, des he deserves to be on the prayer list. Uh, his stroke recovery has probably plateaued, but now he is struggling with macular degeneration. And so uh, we continue to pray with him. Um, and if you know, if you met my father-in-law, you would understand why I'm saying it like this. Uh, but yes, he wanted me to make sure that, as he said, that you know that there's a reason we keep praying for him. We didn't just leave him on the list. He still needs our prayers very, very, very much. So we continue to pray with him, where man. Pat Collins, brother Mark, Mike Trujillo, members and friends in care facilities, including Pat and Jim Collins and Robert Larson, all veteran service personnel and their families, all have been sentenced to life without parole, all fire law enforcement EMS personnel, all those suffering from war and violence in Ukraine, Palestine and Israel, Sudan and South Sudan, and all other conflicts around the world, and for our mission partners and mission starfish Haiti. Are there any other joys and concerns? Mark. Yes, a somewhat of a former associate of mine, she did the painting for me whenever I needed a painting done. And that, uh, Kelly McGinnis is her name. Uh, she had a stroke uh, not last Sunday, and she ended up in Iowa City uh, pretty much all week. She got back yesterday, I believe, and she's doing better. I'm surprised she speaks as well as she does, and, and she still has a control issue with part, half of her body is normal. So. Prayers for her. Uh, so prayers for Kelly, who's a former associate colleague of Marty's, who had a stroke. Are there any other? Um, I uh, delivered meals, and so did Debbie, uh, to Gail Cox and his wife Carla. They live in Canal Shores, and um, he passed away only to his funeral yesterday. And prayers for his family. Um, um, so that was. Gail Cox. Yeah, it's a it's a the masculine Gail. I not, not figured that out yeah. when you said his wife. I yeah. put three and three together. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, they they said they were married sixty eight years. You got to go with that. Um, uh, they got married when they were eighteen to twenty. That's what the family told me. So uh, he was ninety two. Uh, so we pray with the family of Gail Cox who passed away. Um, I also um, 
I'm going to stumble over this a little bit because I'm not quite sure how to word it. I have a half cousin who is currently on trial for something. Um, and I am praying that justice may prevail. Um, and that it's just, it's a very bad situation. And I, I am hopeful that whatever the outcome, it will lead to an improvement of lives of various people. Um, and so I am not praying for, okay, that's a lie. I am praying for a particular result, but I'm not going to say that. Just going to say that I'm praying for justice um, and that justice would prevail. Um, it's a hard thing to pray for, but just praying for that. Are there any other joys and concerns shared this time, Matt? My son's fiance and great grandma, Thursday, Wednesday night and Thursday early morning, her um, aorta blew and she got airlifted to. Somewhere in Chicago, uh, they had to replace it like a 14 hour surgery, but nobody in Chicago was touching because of her age. So they had to fly somebody in from Michigan to do the surgery. Yeah. So, Matt's son's fiance's great grandmother um, had her aorta rupture um, and was life flighted to Chicago to have the surgery, and then they brought in a surgeon from Michigan. Surgery, uh, but I'm assuming she got through the surgery and is. I have no idea. I'm sure. Okay, so we continue to pray for that their entire family. Are there any other joys and concerns to share this time? If not, then let us turn our hearts on our minds. Loving God, we ask that you be with us this day. You hear what we silently say on our hearts and minds. You know the language of our prayers, even if we shudder to say them out loud. You know our needs, even when we do not. You know the needs of our hearts, even if our desires are not what we need. Loving God, as we lift ourselves to you, we ask that you just surround us with your love and your grace. Where physical healing needs to be had, we ask that you provide it. Where end of life is coming, we ask that you give comfort. Where anguish, where anguish exists, we ask that you give us peace. Where it all begins. Where our weaknesses and our tenderness <coughs> we ask that you give us a healing ball of love. Loving God, as we have lifted so much concern to you and we have much concern, we also lift up to you many joys. We lift up to you long marriages. We lift up to you wise lives. We lift up to you celebrations of just the joy and lift up to you everything that we need that has been given to us, the community gathered, the love of this place that comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, loving God, as we have lifted our concerns to you, as we have lifted our joys, as we have lifted many things silently on our hearts and minds, now we join our voices together as one. Using the prayer Jesus taught his friends and disciples praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
join me in the call to, to offer. God has shown us the meaning of generosity and the beautiful diversity of creation. In the overflowing love of Jesus Christ, in the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit, God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. Lord ushers, please help us give our offerings.